Hi everybody and welcome to another weekly update video from myself, Sarah Lane. So this week has been quite busy for me and next week as well is quite busy but before I get into my news I want to share some of the things that have been happening in Azure this week. And yes I have got some notes because there's a few things that I want to remember so I'm just going to um, pull them up. So this week, the first announcement is that Azure Files um, launched a new feature where you can basically um, replace your on-prem file server with a file server in Azure and use Active Directory um, permissions to control the access to that. Now, I'm not going to go into masses of detail about that because my colleague Thomas has actually done a video and a blog post around that and he interviewed one of the product team around that so I'll put a link in the description and you can go and watch that because it's a really informative video that covers it off and I think it's about 20-25 minutes long and they basically go through the whole whole thing and the whole scenario and, and, and tell you that, about that in more detail. The other thing that went um, generally available this week is Azure Sphere. And Azure Sphere is one of our IoT kind of control hub devices and it's now went generally available which means that we would support it if you launched it within your production environment. So again that will be very helpful for a lot of companies now that it's went generally available and they can launch that into their production environments. And also um, Azure Cost um, Management released um, a feature, um, an update into their product that allows you to drill even further into your costs. So it goes down as far as meters now. So you can start to drill into why something is costing a lot of money and which meter um, is doing that. For example, if you run virtual machines within your environment, the, the, drop, the drill down report now lets you go down, not just to see that virtual machine, but drill into it and see things like, is it my public IP address that's costing me a lot of money? Is it transfer of data in and out, et cetera, like that. So it goes into much more detail around your report and you can drill further down into that. So again, I'll put links um, to these announcements and more information in the description in the show notes below. Um, but for me, it has been a busy week. So I've been working on a presentation that I'm delivering at the weekend um, at Scottish Summit, which is a massive event that's happening in Scotland. It technically is the first time that Scottish Summit has ran, um, but it's the second event that the team have launched. So um, last year, the team behind it launched an event which was specifically Dynamics 365 and Power Platform focused and they had about 300 people attend the event and this year they've went a bit bigger and bolder and they're covering the full Microsoft stack and there is 900 people due to attend the event on Saturday and I believe there's a whole host of international speakers um, from Scotland, England and all over the globe coming across to speak at the event. So I'm super excited to see how that turns out and also super excited to see how many women actually appear because I often am the only female or a handful of females at these events. So I'll be interested to see how many of those 900 attendees are actually females as well and see if we've been able to capture that audience with this event. So when I've not been working on that presentation, I have been out and about. So on Tuesday, I was taking part at a STEM event. So I went along to a, an assessment day that they call it, which is where I was a judge. So over the last 10 weeks, um, children from various different schools in the, in the area, um, aged 12 to 13, have been working on a project. And they were given two briefs. So they were asked either to do a project around smart technology and how that would solve a problem, or look at sustainability and how we can adapt things and, and deal with climate change, etc. So each of the projects were all different, each of the schools had picked different ones and I got the chance to go along and, and judge their final um, entry or final project. And that was in the format of a few different things. So they had to do a written report about what they'd done. They had to do a verbal presentation. They had to do like a display board that um, showed me a bit visually what about the product um, or the, the solution that they'd come up with. And they also were tasked with a model if appropriate and if they could do that for their solution as well. So it was really interesting to see how the kids were tackling some of the problems we had. Um, one of the schools was doing around security in their school. So they were looking at introducing fingerprint um, 
kind of devices or locks at each of the, the classrooms. And that way um, the kids would be able to register themselves into that class and um, the teacher wouldn't have to do a manual like hands up who's here um, at the start of the class, meaning that they could save five, ten minutes at every the start of every lesson because the, the pupils had to use the fingerprint display to kind of go into the classroom and it also would help um, make sure that people weren't surreptitiously putting their hand up for their, their pal or their friend that wasn't actually in class so that was pretty cool and um, the other projects were around um, buildings and how we deal with our houses and sports centres etc in the light of climate change and some of the things that are happening in the world, you know, flooding, hurricanes, um, and the kids were were coming up with some um, amazing ideas, and it was really it was really good to see their thought process and see how they went down that journey, and also where I could help them try and um, add to that journey and and where they could learn from it next time, and this is a fun project for them but it's also something that they can add to their CV and their college application because at the end of the event they all got a certificate and that's part of a, a kind of global um, a, a Scotland scheme I think it is um, where they, they work towards like a bronze certification a silver and, and a gold as they grow older and um, get older and the challenges become a bit higher expectation wise and um, so that was really fun fun day and um, I got to meet some um, other, the other judges and have some really good discussions with them as well and obviously the interaction with the kids so um, that was fun and, and that was a good good use of my time on Tuesday and then on Wednesday we had the first Glasgow Azure user group of 2020 and that was that was in a new venue so we have a new um, host hosting us at, at their venue and and it went really well we had three speakers and um, so the first session was a session around 50 ways to kill your project manager and it was a bit of a tongue-in-cheek um, presentation from um, Janet and Chris around how IT people and project managers can work together and not be seen as the enemy of each other and deliver successful projects um, within their environment. So it was really well received and there's lots of um, social media interaction around that session as well. So unfortunately we didn't record it on the night but I'm hoping to convince Chris and Janet to actually rerun it um, and, and record it so that we can put it online. And the second session was from Michael Stevenson who came up from Newcastle and he spoke about Terraform and Azure Serverless and how you can use Terraform to build up your serverless environment and then continuously deploy them or redeploy them um, using like Azure, pi Azure DevOps pipelines and, and have that consistent approach to your environment. So it was really good fun and it was really nice to see a lot of familiar faces at the user group and also some new faces as well and, and that's been great fun. So our next event will be in April so we haven't firmed up the speakers around that yet but we'll get some information released about that. But it's the 29th of April so get it in your diary and come along, we'd love to see you there. And that's pretty much me. I've had a few meetings internally about projects. Actually, one of the meetings I can mention. So I've been looking at how I can interact more with um, events in Scotland. As you know, I, I kind of go uh, globally and travel and support events for Microsoft. But I'm looking to try and support the community here more in Scotland and our customers and my colleagues and the Microsoft Scotland office. Um, so if you have any ideas about events that you would like to see us try and host, either topics or type of events. So do you want like a user, user group type of meeting? Do you want a hackathon? Um, do you want a round table where we discuss things? What, what kind of things would you like and where would you like them in Scotland? Um, any ideas, any suggestions, please do reach out to me and we'll be able to see and collate and try and figure out what we can support and what we can and what's realistic for us to put on over the next few months as well. So next week I am off to Finland and I'm going to be speaking at Tech Days Finland. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, it's an event I've not been at before. It's a country I've not been at before. So I'm looking forward to seeing that and getting um, to meet that community and interact with the audience there as well. So if you're around at Tech Days Finland, please do come say hello. I will have lots of stickers in my bag as well. So um, that, that would be nice to meet you. So I'm going to sign off now, people. Have a good weekend. Have a good one. Thank you.